What's up, folks, and welcome to Indie Ramble. I got another shmup for you guys here. It's been a little bit since we've done one of these, and I've actually had this one on my radar to cover for a while, but I it took me a while to really sort of formulate my opinions of it. But it's kind of, it, it's very different, and that's why I wanted to show this to you. So this is Remote Life, and one of the interesting things about this right away is that this game was entirely developed by one person. And by entirely, I mean entirely. Even the music was done by just one guy. And that always impresses me quite a bit. And as shmups go, it's got kind of its own cool identity as well. It's a little bit R-type, a little bit Gradius. Um, but neither of those things entirely either. It's, it's very much got its own identity here. And it's doing things its own way that I, I think is kind of neat. So, it's only on consoles right now, not on PC. This is published by Rodalika Games, who, for some reason, tends to mostly avoid the PC. Really can't tell you why that is. Um, but I'm playing this on a PS5. Uh, it is on, on PS4 and Xbox and Switch as well, so it is in a lot of different places. There is a story to this game. Um, it's kind of a shmup story, like most shmup stories are. Uh, this crazy uh, organic ship has shown up and is potentially posing an extinction-level threat to humanity. You gotta go. You gotta go. Done deal with it. Uh, is basically what it is. There is some voice acting in this. Unfortunately, it's all uh, machine-based text-to-speech and it's not necessarily all that well translated. So it's a little bit goofy, but you know, it's an interesting little story, but stories and shmups are never really the point, you know? And where this thing, you can see here right from the gameplay how this thing resembles Gradius and R-Type, like I said, but this is doing things in a very different way. For starters, you may be seeing the way the gun works. Yes, indeed, the most of these games, the gun, either just shoot straight forward or in a very limited arc, and usually if you want to do something like shoot behind you, you got to pick up power-ups or options and get them configured the way you want. Not this. This has almost a twin stick element to it, where you're controlling your ship's movement with the left analog stick, and then you use the right analog stick to aim your gun. And depending on the type of gun you're firing, you, you can use this with any gun in the game, but certain guns, because of the speed at which their projectiles work, may or may, you know, may be slower or have other types of um, uh, limitations that you have to keep in mind. But it allows you to fire in a 360 degree arc and attack enemies from all angles at once, which is really, really neat. There are a bunch of different weapons in this, and you can see in the upper left there that I have three different slots, and they're called classes. So each of the different weapons has a class, either A, B, or C, and that denotes what slots they can go into. They can only fit in the slots that they're designated for. And you also have a special here, which is this cluster bomb thing in this case, so there's additionals for that as well. The weapons that you will pick up have limited ammo as you can see there's a little meter there but you will never run out whenever you run out of ammo for one of the weapons that you picked up it will go back to a weaker weapon related to that class that does have unlimited ammo they're like i said they're weaker or in some cases they're slower or something like that but you will always have a gun available to you and the weapons there's a lot of variance in terms of the power that they have and the way that they shoot and the way that they do things. So it would behoove you if you want to play this game, uh, especially on the harder difficulties, to learn the different weapons, learn which ones are going to work for the situations you find yourselves in and making use of those. Because I will tell you right now, especially in the later levels, this game don't play. Uh, I've been playing it on easy. I have actually not finished it yet. I am stuck on the 15th mission. Um, and I've been stuck on some other ones before too. This game is not easy. It very much requires that you learn the levels, that you learn the enemy patterns, that again, you learn the best weapons to use and the best times to use them. Um, because especially on higher difficulties, this game will, uh, will challenge you. Uh, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You'll also notice there's no scoring system in the game, <clears throat> which is very unusual for a shmup. The point of this is is just to get through it and get to the end, to complete the story and to see all the environments. There's no there's no score whatsoever. There's no leaderboards. There's no anything like that. There's no competitive element to this beyond finishing it. 
Um, it's it's very much focused on that, which which I can respect. You know, I I think that's an interesting uh, an interesting way to approach uh, a shmup. You know, I love score based score attack games, and shmups are one of the sort of primary genres for that. But you don't have to do that all the time either, so it's pretty cool. And the way this works is that there's a lot of enemies to kill, but you can see here that the levels themselves are half the challenge. You're often, especially in the later levels, going to be put into some very cramped quarters. Um, so there, we got to the end. So you see there's the little mission percentage at the top. That shows how far you are through the level. Every single level has a different boss that you have to fight. Um, I have found the bosses to be rather uneven in terms of difficulty. Some of them have been very easy, some of them have been quite tricky, and that difficulty curve can't be counted on to go up necessarily throughout the game. Like, I've fought some bosses mid-game that were dead easy, and others earlier on that were quite tricky, so that's something to keep in mind. But you can see the bosses are all really weird and kind of gross, because this is almost horror-themed. Um, but you'll take out a boss, and then you move on to the next uh, uh, to the next level. And all the levels are very different from each other. There is... The sheer amount of art in this game is crazy. Um, there we go. We finished that one up. Yeah, the sheer amount of art in this game is kind of bananas. Uh, the levels all look quite different from each other. Some assets are reused between levels, but not that much. And everything is animated, and you know there's a there's a a lot of work that went into the the art in this game, uh, for sure. You also see here you have three different kinds of ships. You have to complete uh, to the game to a certain point to be able to choose the ladder ships. You can also pick different colors for them if you like. Um, there is also a final, uh, basically a mode you can unlock that allows you to effectively play. Uh, looks like to play as an enemy or something like that, but that requires you to beat mission 15, which I have not yet. So there are 18 missions in total, so it's it's not a it's not a short game. It will take you a while. You know, the yes, you do scroll rather slowly through the levels, but you you'll see that these are reasonable length uh, each for sure. Um, and then the interesting thing is, not all the levels are like this, um, where you're just doing the standard scroll left to right type of thing. There are a couple of levels where you actually have the ability to kind of free roam and you have to make your way through a map to destroy a series of different objectives in order to complete it. Um, you know, there's another level where you're playing this person who's almost kind of like in a little tank sort of thing. Uh, plays almost like Blaster Master or something like that, maybe. That's probably not the best comparison, but something like that. So it's not just your standard horizontal shmup either. It, the, the, the levels sort of surprise you once in a while. You know, this is a first impression series, but I actually did want to try to finish this before I did the video so that I could see all the different variants that the game has to offer, but I got stuck on, on level 15 and I wanted to I, I wanted to cover this because I've been sitting on this video for a couple months now, so I, I was like, alright, so we're going to do that. So you see, here's one of the things where I told you where you're going to have to sort of fight the level as well as the enemies. Um, all of the level stuff... Um, where you have to deal with like these different sections that open and close, it can definitely get frustrating at times. Um, simply because the enemies are not subject to the same rules you are, and that's something that's going to frustrate some people. But those various walls that open and close that can get in that can get in your way and impede progress and and kill you do not kill the enemies. The enemies can fly through them, so can their bullets. So you're going to find yourself doing this almost like shmup platforming while also trying to keep the enemies off your back. And that can get very frustrating because it can feel a little bit petty and unfair at times. But you get used to it and, you know, the levels are designed so that you can get through them in spite of that. So you have to, you know, if you learn it and you, you put in the work, uh, you'll be able to do that. And that's the thing. This game is not easy. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I believe I said already, I'm playing this on the easiest difficulty, and i gotten stuck on mission 15. I'll get through it eventually, but it do, this game doesn't mess, and, um, you know, there are other difficulty modes as well, so it will definitely challenge you, um, uh, if you want it to. So you gotta, you gotta be mindful of that as well. And, if there was a way, so, failed that there. That game over noise too, it's really loud and really kind of, I'm not a fan of that. And 
The, if there was one way I could describe this game, and this is why I find it so fascinating, and it would be whether it was developed by one person or not, this level was a pain for me because this level is incredibly dark and you often can't see the enemies coming at you. Um, this one was a bit of a, this one was a bit of a headache, but the thing that if I was, if I could describe this game in one word, it would probably be eclectic just because it does so many things differently and in a, a weird and different way. Like the dev did all his own music too. And the music in this game is not bad, but some of it is, it's weird. Some of it is definitely weird. Um, but it's got an identity very much all its own. This is not a game you can play and legitimately say, well, this is just an R-Type ripoff, or this is just a Gradius ripoff. It's very... It wears its inspirations on its sleeve, I think, but it also is very much its own thing. And it's clear that the developer had his own vision for this and really wanted to do something that was different and a little bit out there and a little bit strange. And I can always dig that. I can. Um, I think people who like uh, horizontal shmups will like this. If you are a primarily score attack shmup player, this will definitely not be for you because there's no score in it at all. So you know, can't do much with can't do much with that. Um, you know, people who like to play shmups a bit more casually and aren't into the to to a significant challenge probably won't be into this, but. There is a lot of depth here for people who want to learn the systems and want to learn the best way to do it. It's one of those games where you'll play a level and you'll fail it, but you'll feel yourself getting a little bit better each time. Every time you play the level again, you're going to get a little bit further and you're going to remember a little bit more of where the enemies were placed and you're going to remember a little bit more, you know, uh, where, where they come in and where things, you know, what enemies have the best kind of um, vulnerabilities and things like that. And you you will feel that iterative progress where you're like, yeah, I, I'm failing at this, but every time I get a, I get just that little bit better. It's very good at doing that. It Sometimes deaths in this do feel a little petty and cheap, but it never feels like you have to fight your... It never feels like you're fighting a game that's cheating. It feels like this is a game where you you have you know you will learn and you will improve, and you'll feel that as you go. Um, you know, I've had some deaths in this that I would consider kind of cheap, but I would never cons I don't believe that the game is designed to be cheap, uh, if that makes any sense. So, um, yeah, it's just really interesting, and you know, this is published by Rotalika Games, which. They have put out some cool stuff, particularly in the in the shmup arena, especially with some of the, the shmups that they've helped revive. They have also put out a lot of shovelware. They are one of these publishers. This is something I'd love to do a video on if I could research more about it. They're one of these publishers that puts out a lot of, frankly, shovelware, but all of it ha it is dead easy to get either a platinum trophy or a thousand achievement points, depending on your, your platform of choice. And they sell them cheap. So a lot of people tend to buy these games that are objectively not good just because they're crazy achievement people. I mean, I've done that in the past a couple of times. But, and I, I will say, to platinum trophy this game is not that hard. The trophies are all tied to just beating levels and then beating the game. There's no special challenges in it. If you can get through the game once, which is not the easiest thing in the world, but if you can get through the game once, you'll get, um, you know, you'll get your platinum trophy or your thousand achievement points. But this is definitely not one of their shovelware titles. This feels a cut above. This feels like, it, it does feel like it's not getting much attention, which is a bit of a, a problem. And unfortunately, when you do put your game out with a publisher that is known for putting out a lot of shovelware, it may be a little bit harder for your, your, your thing to get noticed, right? Um, but this is, this is not one of those games. This is, this is a game like uh, Glaylancer or... Uh, some of the other shmups that I've covered from that Rotalaika has put out uh, older shmups that they've re-released and sort of given a modern treatment to and they put out some really good stuff on that front uh, on, on there I think they've done a pretty good job a couple of the cotton games I played uh, were ported and, and published by Rotalaika um, you know they can do good work 
Um, and I, I think this is this one is interesting. You know, they just ported and published this. Uh, they didn't really have any hand in its development that I'm aware of. Um, but I think this is a little bit of a hidden a, a, a little bit of a hidden gem. It's something I think shmup players should check out, and just people who like challenge in general. Um, I've been enjoying it. Its whole aesthetic is weird. The look of it, the sound of it, it all is just very. It's very odd and very different, but it's not bad. Like, like I said before, the sheer amount of art in this for a game made by one person is kind of crazy. And the music's strange, but it fits as well. This is a very strange place that you're playing in, right? And it has almost a... I don't want to say an H.R. Giger feel to it, because I, I don't think it's quite as advanced as Giger was, but it has that very unsettling thing, right? Where everything just looks weird enough that you're like, ah, I just feel, <sighs> you know, I feel a little uncomfortable with this aesthetic. And I, I think that's by design, and I think that's actually really cool. Um, it's not your typical, you know, a, you know, there's a lot of great shmups out there, but a lot of them are very similar in terms of how they look and sound. They sort of follow a style uh, that's very familiar and that you can sort of spot a mile away. This is not that. This is very much, you know, marching to the beat of its own drum, um, which I can always respect. And I like to see developers that take a genre that I really, I really like. You know, I said before, I have a crippling shmup addiction, even though I'm not good at most of them. Uh, you know, I, I love this genre. I've, all, I've, I've loved it for pretty much my whole life. And I always like seeing someone take a, a genre that I love and doing something different and weird with it. This part always drove me nuts because I just, I can't follow the pattern of these things well and I always get my ass squished. That's honestly the best I've ever done at that section and it was when I was recording a video, so that's always cool. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's different and different in a way that I can truly respect and appreciate. It's not perfect. Uh, I do think that it relies a little bit too much on making you navigate frustratingly difficult level design. Um, I think it's... I think some of the sound effects are a little eh, ho-hum. And the way a couple of them are over-mixed, like the game over sound, I really don't like. Um, but... This, this plays fairly well. It gives you a lot of different ways to play it. And... It looks cool in that weirdly unsettling kind of way. So I think it I, I think it could be worth your time. If you if you like shmups and you want something different, I think this is um, definitely worth giving a look to. I'll be finishing it. I'll be putting in the time to get good enough at, at the rest of the levels to get through it. I do want to see it to the end. I do want to see uh, where things end up and see if there's any more mission variety that happens uh, in this. I've kind of purposely not shown you the missions that, that look a lot different because, um, uh, you know, I, I kind of want you to discover those for yourselves if you're interested in this. But, and you can see as well, it has an atypical life system as well. There are lives in the game, but you don't have like in a Gradius or a, um, an R-type, you would res restore to a prior checkpoint and uh, have to go forward from here. In this, if you blow up, you come back right away, you can just only do it a certain number of times. And you have more health on the easier difficulties as well. So uh, you turn that up, it's gonna get even harder. And yeah, just very unique and different and I really appreciate that about it. So yeah, that is Remote Life. It is out now on all of the major consoles, including the Switch, not on PC. Don't know why. They should really rectify that at some point. The shmup community is has gotten pretty large and robust on the PC, and I, I think they're kind of leaving money on the table by not putting it out there. Um, so I think that's something they should look into at some point. But um, I do recommend it. Um, I think it's... it's, it, it's it's for shmup fans only, but it's also for shmup fans who are maybe craving something a little bit different. So, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it. If you like what you saw here, please do all the normal YouTube things. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. Leave a comment down below. Tell me, does this interest you? Uh, does this kind of shmup uh, that looks a little bit different uh, grab your attention? 
Are there any other shmups that are out there now for modern systems that are also breaking the mold like this one is in a, in a way that I that I haven't seen before? I'd love to check that out too. And as always, you can follow me over at twitch.tv slash pxabstraction for multiple variety streams a week. I cover Indian retro titles over there, including a lot of things that you won't see over here on YouTube. We have a fantastic community over there, and I would love to see you be a part of it. Thank you again, everyone, and I'll see you on the next Indie Ramble. You folks have yourselves a great one. Take her easy.